Vice Now, I am Dustin Baker. I'm here with the other Dustin. It is March 8th. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm glad to be back on the show. Yeah, this is the third time. Um, Before I forget, tell us where everybody can find you on Twitter and TikTok and all that. Yeah, so I'm on Twitter, uh, at ThatVikingsFan8. Um, post a lot of NFL Vikings content on there. And then also on TikTok, uh, just that Vikings fan, 15,000 followers on there. Um, so yeah, lot, lots of Vikings content on there as well. Well, wonderful. That's why, that's why you're on the show and we appreciate it. Um, this week, uh, in particular, started off with a bang, kind of a, a sad one. Eric Hendricks left the organization after eight seasons and he'll hit free agency. But now, everybody, we're going to talk. Well, let me set the table. We're going to talk about free agency, <clears throat> external free agents here in a couple minutes. But I want to set the table because cap space needs to come from somewhere. They created about nine and a half million by cutting ties with Kendricks. But on the docket, docket for cap casualties now are, in most folks' opinion, Adam Thielen, perhaps Dalvin Cook, Jordan Hicks, CJ Ham, maybe Zadarius Smith. Um, you don't have to give me a rundown of every single dude, but which guys do you expect to be gone by next Monday? Um, it, that's it's a good question. I think that a lot of our fan favorites are are bound to be gone. You know, we already have Kendricks gone. I think a lot of people really like Kendrick Kendricks. He was a very stable. He was very stable at the linebacker position. You know, made plays. You know, everywhere sideline to sideline. Uh, it's unfortunate that you know he had to go, but we have to do what we have to do to create cap space. Um, but I definitely think that CJ Ham is one of those guys that, you know, will have to go uh, in a moder- modernized offense. I don't know if fullbacks are really used that much anymore. Um, you know, you could convert them back to a running back, but I don't see that happening at all. Um, the other team that really uses a fullback would probably be the 49ers uh, with Kyle Juszczyk. But other than that, um, if they do something with Thielen, I could see Thielen being cut as well. Um, I don't know if he'll be on a restructured contract or anything like that. Um, but we will see. We'll see with Thielen. Cook, um, I, it's up in the air with that one. <laughs> I could see him staying. I could see him going. I don't have a solid answer on that quite yet. But those three, I could definitely see um, some movement. Some movement on. And that's got to happen soon because for now the Vikings are about fifteen and a half million dollars underwater, which means when we get to your list of possible free agents they can pursue, they got to have money to do it. And we're also vacillating in this Kirk Cousins realm because we're unsure if the team will extend him. In theory, if they extended him by a year or two or three, then they could alleviate cap space to the about between anywhere between fifteen and twenty four million dollars because they like to backload those deals. So we are on the precipice of about probably three to five big transactions, which will can, you know, get up to between 30 and $40 million in cap space with the snap of two fingers. When that happens, the reason you're on the show today, uh, legal tampering begins Monday. Uh, I think you have a list of free agents that pique your interest. They can either be predictive that you think they'll join the Vikings or guys that you think would be a fit. Why don't we start at the top of your list with uh, person X? Who is it? Well, um, wait, go, just going forward into my list here, I like to think at uh, uh, just realistic signings that the Vikings could do. You know, we could have some real rah rah signings. You know, <laughs> all guys that we want to sign. You know, guys like Tremaine Edmonds. You mm-hmm. know, those top free agents that we want. But trying to look at you know realistic free agents that you know we do have money for that we could could sign as well. So, um, in, not in any order, okay. but I think. Uh, Linebacker is definitely a position that we got to look at now with um, uh, Kendrick's gone. And then I think Jordan Hicks is definitely gone as well. Uh, there's no way that they keep keep him. But uh, the free agent I'm looking at is uh, Devin Bush um, from Pittsburgh. He had a uh, great, great year with Pittsburgh, you know, the past couple of years. Um, 81 total mm-hmm. tackles. He didn't record a sack, but I think he's a great linebacker to fill in uh, to help uh, Asamo out as well. Um, I think I think it's Asamo's time to shine as well. Um, with the limited snaps that he had this past year, I think he's I think he'll be a perfect fit uh, for this Brian Flores system. You know, um, blitz heavy. You know, very aggressive. And I think Devin Bush fits that mold pretty well. As 
a couple things on him. He has the first round pedigree from 2019. So there's always that sizzle of like, all right, well, he's going to come to our team and then he's going to be an absolute stud pro bowler. And because he really hasn't commanded pro bowl or anywhere near all pro attention, he shouldn't be as expensive as Tremaine Edmonds, who you mentioned. And so this could be a value-based addition, which is a word Quasi Adafa Mensa uses all the time. Plus, you have a defensive coordinator who's a linebacker's coach. That's his baby. And a former tie to him from as recently, uh, recently as like two or three months ago with the Steelers. So I, I like the Bush idea, especially for keeping the, the money not astronomical and then pairing him with Awesome Wah. Who do you got next? Uh, well, next, uh, depending on if Phelan is gone or not, um, I think that uh, former Lions wide receiver DJ Chark could definitely be in the mix. Uh, he might be a little bit more on the expensive side, but we'll see. Uh, you know, you had 30 receptions for 502 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, not too bad for, you know, their wide receiver two, three, whatever he was in with that Lions offense. But I think that the Vikings need just – a, a deep threat wide receiver in this offense um jj he's just one man but when he gets double team like he did a lot last year you know our offense just pretty much goes kaput um and i think someone that can stretch the field like dj chark can definitely help your offense out a lot and you know you can also look in the draft as well but i think to make an immediate impact dj chark will fit right in and he's another LSU guy, and the Vikings have tremendous luck with LSU guys from Daniil Hunter, Justin Jefferson, Patrick Peterson, uh, and the list is quite impressive. Uh, the cool thing about him, for folks that aren't familiar, is he's tall, he's 6'4", and he's fast. Uh, at the Combine 2019, he ran a 4'3", 40, I believe. And if you play fantasy football, you remember him from that 2019 season where he felt like he was going to ascend like A.J. Brown. Well, he did for one year, and then it just kind of stabilized, and he was an uh, average wide receiver. But the hope would be, with everybody singling, laser focusing on Jefferson, that your theory could be correct, where you know they onboard him, and he's a productive WR2. One thing about this free agent uh, period that's coming up, I hope they find as many guys as possible so that when we get to the draft in seven weeks, we can just truly embrace and wrap our arms around best player available. Because if they don't sign a linebacker and they don't sign a wide receiver or they don't extend Cousins, you've got like three glaring needs that you're staring at the draft saying, well, they have to draft a linebacker. They have to draft a wide receiver. And you don't really want to be in that position. You want the draft to feel like gravy. Who's your next guy, sir? Uh, next one I think a lot of Vikings fans are also talking about is uh, safety Byron Murphy or corner, whatever he wants to play, or Brian Flores wants him to play. Uh, he ended the season with 36 tackles, you know, half a sack, uh, no interceptions, but I definitely think that his, uh, his uh, ability to be a hybrid, you know, safety corner, whatever, you know, you want him to play, I think he's a very versatile player uh, and a good fit for Brian Flores. Um, whether we keep or lose Patrick Peterson or corners, uh, we we have decent players. Uh, I wouldn't say anybody's super great. There's a lot of upside to a lot of them. Cameron Dantzler, he's a little inconsistent, but he has some upside. Um, the corners that we got last year, uh, Caleb Evans and Andrew Booth, they definitely have some upside. They just got to stay healthy, which, uh, you know, knock on wood, they do this year. Um, they can be something special. But Byron Murphy, I think he can be a great, great fit for this Brian Flores system uh, with aggressiveness, just like we've been saying. And I think I think that's what we need. The reason I am interested by a cornerback in free agency is similar to what I just said with using the draft as gravy rather than necessity is if indeed. So there's a lot of smoke, whether it's Mel Kuyper, Todd McShay, even Jordan Reed, pro football focus, NFL.com. All of those men have mock drafted Deontay Banks to the Vikings in the last two weeks. And that's fine. I'm sure we can get on, get on board with that. But if you draft a corner at 23, He's not going to be Sauce Gardner right away. And then it's just like Andrew Booth all over again. We go into the summer thinking, oh, okay, well, may the best man, best man win the job. Whereas if they get uh, <clears throat> Byron Murphy or Cameron Sutton type on the open market, then you have a guy kind of like Peterson that we could point to in the summer and say, all right, this guy is for sure. And then may the best men win for the other job because you already have Andrew Booth, Cameron Dantzler, and Caleb Evans. 
And if they draft a corner, then the room gets even deeper. So we're in this real odd space that you alluded to where we have depth, but it's young depth. And we merely hope one of those guys turns out to be a starter or a superstar. All right. What are we at? Number four. Who is it? Uh, number four, uh, we got one that I don't think is really popping up on the radar too much, but it's a great depth signing, I think, would be uh, former Panthers uh, defensive lineman uh, Matthew Ioannidis. Mm-hmm. Uh, ended the season with 37 you know, total tackles, one sack, but you know, depending on, like, a lot of these are depending on, but Delvin Tomlinson, <laughs> I think he, I think he will re-sign with the Vikings. That's why I feel like they pushed his uh, contract situation back a little bit, uh, just so they can figure stuff out. But Matthew and Ioannidis, I think, will be a great uh, depth piece uh, for him to come in. Like I've been saying, with uh, Brian Flores' aggressiveness, he's Definitely one of those more aggressive D linemen, uh, just like he was in Washington. Um, I was a big fan of him. Um, definitely took a step back in his career, you know, getting up there in age as well. But I think he he would be a great depth piece, piece with, you know, Patrick Jones. You still got Daniel Hunter, hopefully, Delvin Tomlinson. You know, we have a lot of good D linemen in that room. It's whether, you know, obviously if we keep them or not, and then – you know, what that depth looks like as well. Yeah, I think uh, whether it's Ionitis or pretty much anybody who's decent, uh, it's unclear if Jonathan Bullard's going to return. I mean, bless his heart, nobody really cares. He was just a guy. They always just have a guy at that spot, whether it's Shamar Steven, uh, Armin Watts was pretty decent. Uh, God, who was, who was before that? Um, there's a couple other that I'm blanking on. Uh, but yeah, they never at, at that spot, they never say, let's go get Brian Breesey from Clemson. It's always just, uh, what I consider a placeholder. So if, if Bullard is not a priority to resign and somebody, whether they trust Ross Blacklock, who they traded for last year or Ioannidis, uh, you're going to need something there, especially if Dalvin Tomlinson doesn't return, because then you need to go get a starter or, you guessed it. Use the draft to, to get to get Brian Breesey or somebody of that caliber. All right. How many you got left? Any more? Uh, I do have one more, but I do want to put an honorable mention in there. Sure. Um, before I get to our last uh, main free agent that I would like the Vikings to resign, uh, honorable mention is Robbie Gold. Whether, mm-hmm. whether or not the Vikings want to resign Greg Joseph, I think he was bound to have a great year. He had a great training camp. Uh, just a little inconsistent uh, with extra points, field goals, and stuff like that. Um, but it, it it's just the inconsistencies with me. Um, Robbie Gold ended the season, you know, making twenty seven out of thirty two field goals, you know, eighty four percent. Where Greg Joseph, he had twenty six out of thirty three with seventy eight percent. Um, so just you know that that big jump from eighty four to seventy eight <laughs> does make a difference. Uh, whether that's game winners, you know, that's you know putting yourself out in front for a majority of the game. Um, kickers do matter. So I, I think Robbie Gold, he's, he is up there in age, but uh, definitely a guy I would like to see, you know, at least try out for the Vikings maybe later in the summer or uh, whatnot. The weirdest thing about <laughs> the Vikings kicker situation or Greg Joseph personally is that there's this drastic discrepancy. The guy was glorious with the game on the line. But if the game wasn't on the line, he was near the bottom crust of kicker like rankings. And I kid you not, extra points, regular regular field goals, the percentage wasn't there. So while we have a special place in our hearts for the guy because he was cold blooded five times and didn't didn't choke at all on any, he hasn't choked on the grandest stage with the game on the line since that Cardinals game in 2021. So we're right now we're in a, we'll take what we can get. We like it. But I think the mentality, whether you're Adafa Mensa, Matt Daniels, or Kevin O'Connell, is we can find a guy who can do both. We don't have to be on eggshells when extra points happen. And you know verifiably in your bones that every extra point that goes up, we assume it's going to be missed. So Robbie Gold, and you wanted to give an honorable mention to somebody to resign or an ex- external free agent. So Robbie Gold was my honorable mention oh, okay. before I got to our last one here. Oh, but, gotcha. Um, our last one, I I feel like the Vikings should sign or what or someone comparable is uh, former Eagles uh, guard Isaac Sumalo. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, he you know he only allowed one sack this past year. Um, I don't know how many games he played. I didn't look into that much, mm-hmm. but I think I think guard is definitely something that the Vikings need to. 
um, keep keep their eye on at least. Uh, Ezra Cleveland played, you know, all right this past year. He was a better run blocker than he was a pass protector. Um, Ed Ingram, obviously, he was the rookie from last year, but it, it's just a stepping on Kirk's feet that you know kind of did it for me. But I I don't I don't think he will do that from here on out. I think he's definitely learned from that. But um, it, it if he doesn't improve um that that then you just got to look at some you know guards whether that's starting caliber or you know fringe guys you know guys like chris reed he was a guy that you know was a good depth piece and you know could have started over um ed ingram because ed ingram did struggle through uh this past season not just stepping on kirk's feet but uh you know just simple simple things in pass protection that you know could could have been worked on but a guy experienced like isaac sumalo i think would be a definite um definite answer at the guard position i think he's uh right guard i want to say but you know guards i think can be flipped to an extent um tackles are a little bit more extreme but guards i feel like you can flip we don't we don't have a problem doing either one in these parts uh you know just flip udo Mm -hmm. wherever you want uh so on the on the depth guard part yes uh i for the life of me ingram a second rounder has to pan out has to get better has to be a damn near pro bowler if you're going to use second round draft capital so i'm really hoping he doesn't go on the long list of vikings offensive lineman disappointments and i don't think that he will but there's always a chance that he does. And if you with Chris Reed and Ezra Cleveland, it would be it would be nice to have a different addition. All right. The last thing I want you to opine on. Um, I know you're a realistic guy. I also know that you're a cousins fan. I want you to predict the outcome or lack thereof of his his extension. Yes or no? Uh well, let's see. I think that not what you want, what you, cousin... not what you want, what you predict will happen. Oops. What I predict. Okay. <laughs> so as big as a Cousins fan as I am, um, I'll just start off what I want and then I'll go with sure. what I think will happen. Um, so what I want to happen is, you know, he's a great guy. He's consistent throughout his career. But at age 35, he's definitely, you know, climbing the ladder. Um, but I think that the Vikings should, you know, just ride out this last last year. But um, what I think could happen realistically is signing him to a two, three year extension and then making those last years kind of like void years. I don't know if that's something that the Cousins camp would want to do, but um, I I think that would be uh, viable because, you know, you're creating cap space for the future, but still having that confirmation of having a quarterback for the next couple of years. So your formal prediction is that there will be an extension. I think that there will be an extension. Okay. Yeah, that's but obviously the void years later. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, that's the topic of discussion. A because it's just an eternal cousins debate, and then B the the cap space has to come from somewhere, and that's the easiest way to do it if they are indeed committed to him from long term. My biggest fear on on cousins or life after cousins so when i became a vikings fan 1996 we had this brief period of dante culpepper when he was pretty awesome he fumbled a lot nobody cares uh and other than that until 2018 we went into a season minus brett Favre of two where we're like all right let's see if this guy's any good let's 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 hope sam bradford has a little left in the tank let's see what jeff george has got and we did it every every year. Um, Sage Rosenfels, Kelly Holcomb, Tavar, Tavares Jackson, all of these maybes. And my fear is, and this doesn't this isn't um, demote me from wanting a rookie quarterback. Is <laughs> I have this fear that if we move on from Cousins and we draft somebody in this draft or the next, and that guy isn't good, we're all going to look back and be like, God, that's why we had Cousins is because it was guaranteed production and it's really a homage to my fears of the past because this team cannot solve the quarterback thing once and for all. So I think that that's why they got cousins five years ago is like, all right, well, we know that this dude is going to throw 25, 30 touchdowns every year and we'll pair him with this defensive mastermind. And it should be bliss. Well, it was varying degrees of bliss. It didn't, it didn't net a super bowl. And so I think that is why some are still like just, content with cousins is because we've lived the other side where we just have the carousel and then, you know, everything, the grass is always greener type of thing. 
All right. Well, that is that's that's the big one is is Cousins extension or lack thereof, because uh, interestingly, if they don't extend him and we get like three weeks from now, then we're all going to pivot to. All right. They got to draft some sort of quarterback in the draft because you don't want to go into 2024 nude of options. And, you know, you know, Cousins is going to hit free agency like Derek Carr one week ago. Uh, then you'd be staring at. All right. Well, you got to draft somebody and find a bridge quarterback. And we've all seen that. So, all right, sir, any closing arguments before we will have you back right before the draft? You got anything for me? Uh, not a, not right now. Uh, I appreciate you having me on the show today. Um, I do want to make one more comment though. Yeah. I think we've had uh, the last 20 or so years, I think we've definitely had more quarterback changes than we do like family members at this point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it feels like that, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, uh, the eternal scourge is that, so they draft quarterbacks. It's not that they just ignore it. It's that when they draft them, the guy either gets hurt like Dante or Bridgewater, the guy sucks like Ponder or I guess Mond, if you want to consider that a flyer. And so I think it's it's, it's ingrained in our psyches to think that if they draft a quarterback, that guy isn't going to be very good. It doesn't have to be that way with the new regime, uh, but we shall see. All right, sir, start doing your homework on the draft and we'll have you back in about a month uh, because we are 50, five, zero days away from the NFL draft. And the lay of the land in free agency will really tell us how the draft's going to shake out for the Vikings. All right, sir. We'll see you in about a month. All right. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Take it easy.